Hey everybody, in today's video I'm going to show you how you can calculate weighted averages in Excel and how you can set up a template that you know you can reuse over and over again. So one example I'm going to go over is you know let's say you're looking to buy a house and there's obviously a lot of different criteria that factor into place and you don't want to take uh, a simple average and say you know the size of the kitchen is as, as valuable as whether as a garage or whether as a basement that sort of thing right you want to customize it to the level of importance it has for you so i'm going to list my criteria the different factors that i might score a house on so things like location square footage um, how close it is to a school whether it has a yard uh, the kitchen the overall layout whether it has a garage basement if it has enough washroom washrooms bedrooms all right so those are some criteria we can we can use now the one other thing you also want to consider is how much how valuable each one of these criteria are relative to one another so you, you can call this weights or points but let's just say you know the location's worth uh you know 30 points square footage might be less important maybe 25 school at 20 you are in kitchen at 15 and then maybe layout gets uh, a less importance along with garage and basement and then washrooms and bedrooms so obviously you can do this however it makes sense for you but the key is you want to assign some relative weighting so that when you go to calculate the overall scores it takes that weighting into account so now i'm going to have uh two houses so that i'm going to let's say we're going to look at house one and house two and what I'm going to do is assign some scores for these houses. And to do this, I'm going to use the rand between function. So how the rand between function works is you can specify a, a bottom and an upper limit. And Excel is going to give you a random number that falls within that range. So just to make this completely random, I'm just going to put, let's say below uh, between 20 and 100. So completely unbiased here. I'm just going to use the random number generator for both of these houses. And then once we're good, so if you if you don't like the results, you know you can always just hit the delete button or anything, and it'll recalculate, right? So let's have a little bit of difference here. I want one that has you know maybe a, a bit bit of a better location than the other. So I'm good with that. So I'm gonna select these cells, hit Control C, and now if I hit Control Shift V, it'll paste that as values. So those random numbers are are done. It's not gonna continue to regenerate. So now. What I'm going to do is create another column now for the house one total score, house two total score. Okay. And now what I can do is take that house, uh, that score for house one, multiply it by the points. Now I'm going to copy this formula over and I want this points column to stay intact. So I'm going to freeze that, F freeze uh, column C. So that's my score for that. And then I'm gonna paste this over here. And because I've locked in that column, you know, even if I paste my, my formula over, it's still referencing that, that column. So now what I can do is I can sum the total of these scores. And what I'm also gonna do is divide them by the point value, which I'll total up here as well. So 145, just to, just to make it um, a bit of a smaller number, put it into, into better context. So it's, it's had a score of 55. And again, let's freeze that. In this case, actually, I can freeze the entire thing, so that's not going to move. So that has a score of 55. This other one had a score of 63. I mean, looking at 9,000 versus 8,000, maybe lost in the translation bit. So it's, it's, it's a, a bit better to scale it in terms of those points, values, and weights. So we have 55 versus 63. So this house, for instance, racked up a lot of points because uh, of the location and the square footage. You know, didn't do well down here, but those were, were less important criteria. Whereas house one did, you know, a bit better on things like, looks like the yard, but didn't do as well up here. And that's why I kind of wanted to highlight that that kind of a difference so as you can see you could repeat this over and over again for house three house four however many you want to look at now you don't necessarily have to 
create all these extra columns. And th there's one function I like using in Excel, and it's called sum product. And so how it works is you just specify an array, and it's gonna do, it's gonna replicate this entire process of multiplying, um, multiplying these values in different columns. So for instance, I select the the points array, that's that's one array, and my next array, let's say for house one, is going to be this value. So as long as the arrays are the same size, how this will work is it'll do the exact same thing that I did here. So as you can see, I don't really need this column. You know, I can calculate, uh, do that calculation right in there. So that's another way that you could have done it. So let's say we wipe this out. Let's make this a bit cleaner. So let's say house one, house two, right? And so what we could do is do the sum, not sum, sum product. I take the points, house one, close that. And then let's freeze column C because that's not going to change, right? And what we could do is if you wanted to, again, normalize it, divide it by the by points value, we can also do um, a sum of those points. And if you hit F4 as you're, before you've closed out of format, you'll notice it automatically does the freezing to both of those, um, both of those cells and, and it freezes the entire range for you. So we still got that 55.1, right? Let's copy this down. Now I've still got the same value, but I'm just gonna move over this house to house two. So just conveniently drag it over. And you know, we've got that same 63.2a value that I had earlier. So as you can see, it's a lot cleaner this way using some products. So you could use um, the extra columns, but you, Certainly don't need to, as you can see, it makes it a whole lot easier to do this. So you could add house three, house four, all this sort of thing, and then just update these formulas and you've got your weighted average calculation. Now, another example I'll show you is, you know, let's say uh, you're, in a, you're in a class and there's different weightings for grading purposes, right? In the school, so you'll have projects, assignments, quizzes, exams, those sort of things, you might have different weightings that get applied to calculate your grade. And so I'll do that uh, as well. So let's say we've got a project, assignments in the course, quizzes, a midterm exam, and let's say a final exam. So for this case, this is gonna be a little bit different because for one, this is not gonna be subjective and it needs to add up to 100% because obviously if you're grading it, you want to make sure that it all adds up correctly. So project, a project might be worth, let's say 5%, assignments may be more important at 10%, quizzes at 20%, a midterm, let's say 25%, and a final exam at 40%. So we want to make sure this adds up to 100%. So we could use the auto sum just to double check. Another way, another way you can do this is if you select these cells, and go down here, you can see sum 100. So if you don't see that, you can just, uh, you know, click on these values here or right click here and uh, select what you want to see. So you've got average, count, sum. So if you don't see these, right click on there and you'll see that information on there. So just an important double check, especially when you're dealing with percentages to make sure they add up to 100%. So now let's say we've got a student score here. You know, again, let's do ran between, let's say the bottom, let's say 50 and a high of 100. Copy this down. And again, control C, control shift B to paste as values. And rather than creating that other column, let's use some product again. So we're gonna take this array, multiply by this. So the student had, had a grade of 68.4, and this would be in, in percentages, so 68.4%. You know, because they they didn't do too well on the final exam, but did did well or did better on the assignments, quizzes, and, and midterms. So that helped keep their grade uh, above above the above the fifty nine. So kept it closer to sixty eight. And so this process is pretty similar to the weighting that was done up here. The main difference is here you're just using percentages. Here you're assigning you know, more subjective point values and then doing the calculation that way. But essentially it's the same thing. You're taking a score, you're multiplying it by weighting. You're taking that weighting, uh, that weighted score as your, uh, as your weighted average. And then you could normalize it, dividing it by, in this case, the points 
to convert it into you know a smaller number easier to compare against in the case of percentages you don't have to do that because it's already uh based on 100 percent. so you, you you can skip that step and still have that that value that you're looking for so that's how you can use and calculate weighted averages in excel